Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video you will learn such important React hook as useMemo. And it is really nice and popular hook to do performance optimizations inside React hooks. So let's jump right into it. So as you can see here I have an empty create react app project with just a single line. And we can check the code, I don't have a lot, here is index.js, nothing here, only app component. And inside app component I am rendering a single div. And if you don't know what is create react app or how you can generate project with it, I will link it here on the top and in the description box below. It is much easier to understand use memo hook on the example. This is why let's create a small feature. We have a list of users and we have an input like search and a button. And when we are typing something in search and clicking on the button, we want to filter these users and show only filtered users. So let's implement this now. So here is our app component and we can create for example above a users array. So this is just an array of objects and here we can say ok we have user id 1 and name for example foo. And now we have one more user with id 2 and name will be bar. So our users array is ready, now we need some markup. So here I will return and for example let's write input and here will be type text. And we need a default value. And in React Hooks worlds, when we are working with input, we are storing everything in state with the use state hook. If you missed my video or you don't know what is use state, I will link it here on the top also. So what we need to do here is create a use state for our input. So let's say that the value will be text, and we need here a setter set text. And we are creating here use state hook with default value as empty string. So this is our state for the text for this input. So here now we are saying value text. And now we need of course on change function and let's name it handle text. And as you can see I don't call here directly set text, I named it handle text additionally. So here is our handle text function and inside we can for example call just set text and inside here we get an event so we can read event target value. So now we successfully created a state and an input. And let's reload the page, your state is not defined, we need to import your state from react. Now let's check once again. Looks like it is working, we have here our input, we can type something and now we have this text inside a variable. So let's check here, I will console log text. And when we are typing you can see that our state changes. And now we want a button, because actually yes, we are setting text directly, but we want to search. So the idea is that in text we are storing what is inside input. But it doesn't mean that this is the value that we want to search. Why? Because we don't want to update a user array here on the fly when we will render it, we want to update it only after we are hitting the button. So for this we need to add a button, so I will wrap it in brackets, and now here will be for example div, then our input, and then after our input I want a button, and here will be on click event, and let's name it handle search. And let's close this button and it will be our search button. So now we need to create function handle search and inside it we will set something so we know that we need to filter users. So we need one more state where we will exactly store a value what is searched now. So I will create here one more state for search and here will be set search. And here I am using use state with empty string. Now here inside we just set search in text. So do you see the difference? We have text and we have search. And the idea is that here we are saving search so we can use it for filtering. But text we are storing just to know what we have here inside this input. And actually here I have a colon, we don't need it. This is why we need two states. Now let's console log here search and check how it works. 
So here I have search and we already have console log for text. When we reload the page, I don't see any errors. Now I am typing something and you can see that text changes this input field, but not search. And this is what we wanted. We wanted to change search only when we are clicking on this button. So we click on this button. Now you can see that text and search are both the same because we both stored them inside state and after hitting the button of course this component was re-rendered and this is what we have inside state and this is the values that we can use. Now the only thing that we need to do is to filter our users. So for this I will create here for example a property filtered users. So let's do it now, filtered users, we just want to use our array of users that we can render and apply their search. So let's say here users filter, so we want to filter all our users and we want, first of all I want here to console log filtering users, write return username and first of all we need to convert it to lowercase and then we want to check if it includes our search string and our search string is search and of course we also can search with different case this is why we also need to apply here to lowercase so this is how we filtered our users and now we simply need to render them on the bottom using for example just map so here let's make a ul list and inside we want to render our filtered user so actually it's not user but users so with s at the end and now here we are doing map and inside it will be filtered user and we want to get some markup so here we can write for example lee and inside we need key to make it unique so the unique thing inside each user is our id and now inside lee we can render our user so here, for example, will be filtered user.name. And let's check if it's all working. So let's reload the page. We see our list of two users. Why is that? Because this is just a map to render all our users. But here are our filtered users. So we're filtering users with contains of this search string. And by default, this search string is empty string. So this. And of course, empty string is inside every string. This is why we are getting back all usernames. Now we start to search something. And as you can see, we just search something, but the list doesn't change. This is exactly what we wanted. But now we are hitting search and our list is filtered. Now let's check on the data that we have. I'm typing bar and now I'm clicking search and you can see only bar. And it will work also with bar. Now our example is fully ready and now the question is what is use memo and how this example can easily show it. So as you can see here in the console we have only one render. So we can see text and search, this is just single console log at the beginning. And we have twice filtering users because we have two users, which means this function is called. And here is what I'm doing. I'm just typing a single letter. And as you can see, we have a re rendering of React component. And here we have our filtering again. Now I'm typing again and we have everything again. And this happening because every re render of our component, all stuff that we wrote here happens. This means that not only all these console logs or rendering, but also this filtering. And this is the problem. And actually this can be a performance leak if you have too much data. The problem is here that every time when we simply type something, everything in our component re-renders and recalculates. And in this case, this filtered users doesn't make any sense to be recalculated. Because this was exactly what we wanted. We wanted to have text and search. So when we are typing something, this array doesn't change. It changes only when we are hitting this button which means it doesn't make any sense to apply this filtering every time when our component renders. We want to do this filtering only when something changes. So what can change? Users array can't change, so only search value can change. So we want to do this filter only when search changes. But you might of course say, why do we need to fix something we have only two users? 
Sure, with two users it doesn't matter. But what if you have 1000 users or 10,000 users? This means that every time with every hit of the button we have this filtering of 10,000 users. And of course it's not performance. This is why we can use in such cases use memo. So here for this I will import use memo hook. And now what we need to do is wrap everything with use memo. And inside use memo we are providing a function. And inside this function we want to return what we want to calculate. So this is how it's looking like. We have use memo and we are calling it. And inside we are providing a function. And this function returns something that need to be memoized. And if you don't know what memoized in JavaScript is, this is when we have some difficult calculations, we can remember a value and just change it when our dependencies changes. In our case, we can memoize what we are calculating here with filtering and recalculate this filtering only when search changes. The main point is that if we just write like this, this code doesn't do anything, because we didn't set here an array of dependencies. Which means if the second parameter here is not there, or it is empty, then it doesn't do anything. What we want to do here is pass inside the parameter that is the dependency, and in our case search. Which means we don't run anything here until search changes. And this is exactly the same idea like inside use effect. And actually, if you didn't watch my video regarding use effect, I will also link it down in the description. And now we provided here search, which means our function will be called only when we need to recalculate something. As you can see in browser, we have here filtering users at the beginning because we set the default value inside search. Now we are typing something, and as you can see, filtering user console log is not visible, which means we don't recalculate anything and we don't re render our users. But now we are hitting search, and as you can see, we are getting filtering users again, which means only when we are changing the search state, so this property search that we created on the top, only then we recalculate our filtering. And this is how we are using it. So use memo inside a function and this function returns your calculations. And here is the array of dependency and it is super important to provide it. Also, you might ask, okay, use memo is so great, why we are not writing it in every line? And the point is that use memo is a solution for performance problem. And it also comes with a cost, because to store a value also takes the resources of JavaScript. Which means if you don't have a problem, then don't use memo. And use it only when you have a bottleneck, you see that you have performance problem, and then apply the fix with use memo. So it is always better to do optimizations only when you need to. And this is all that you need to know about use memo hook. And if this video is too easy for you, I have a full advanced React Hooks course, which is going 8 hours, where we are creating a real application from start to the end. And I will link it down in the description box below, as well as links to all my other courses. And if you like this video, don't forget to put thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you didn't like it, maybe consider watching once again on increased speed. And I will see you in my next video.